Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that short video and welcome to our year end celebration. My name is Eugene and I'm the senior event manager here at CMX. And wow, we have made it to the end of 2022. Can you believe it? We have a lot in store for you today where we'll hear from a panel of community leaders about their insights for 2023, as well as their experience from this past year. And lastly, we're also so excited to announce the finalists for the Community Industry Awards. But before we get started, I'd like to give a brief intro to our platform so we're all comfortable with getting around the event. We're currently on the Bevy platform, which is our tool to build, grow, and scale communities with events. Feel free to look around at our agenda, which you can find up above. And you'll also see some information in our virtual booths um, from our sponsors today, Discourse and Work Out Loud. And lastly, you'll see on the right hand side, which is where we have our chat feature. We'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. So feel free to share what you're excited to do over the holiday season. And we'd love to see what you have to share. So with that said, I'm happy to introduce Jess Hobbs, our Director of Community Programming here at CMX. Hello, Jess. In Hi. lieu of our standing ovation, let's all give her a warm welcome and throw your emojis in the chat and say hello. Jess, I'll pass it off to you. Hi, everybody. It's really great to be here. Um, <clears throat> it's great to be um, in community with you and celebrating the year we've had together. It's been a big year. We've had a few big years in a row. Um, I want to kind of start off my thoughts with something that um, O.C. Oak uh, posted today in the community. He wrote an article called um, We Are a Sum. And I love the quote he put in there. Um, Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. And I really love that quote in consideration with CMX. I love who we are together. And I'm so excited to be here to help work together with you to co-create where CMX is going next. Um, as we move into our year-end um, celebration and our year-end celebration everywhere in articles and um, posts, a lot of people are thinking about what's happening next year, um, what we've done this year and what's to come next year. Um, and I wanna kind of think about that with the CMX. Like, where are we going? Who are we going to be? And one of the things that I really want to explore with you is our why. Why do we do this community work? Um, I know we, you know, ROI and data and operations are key elements to help us do what we do. But why do we do it? I, you know, I know some of the reasons I do it. I love bringing people together. I love creating spaces for people together. I love those moments when you notice two people in your community thinking the same thing or speaking about similar things and you bring them together. I love that element of community. And I love creating those ideas and beautiful qualities of community together. Um, and I love how we all do it in these small communities, these big communities, these events, because it's not just, for me, it's not just about that immediate community. It's about the implications of what community is on a global scale. Um, you know, I don't think I have to beat around the bush. We have a lot of huge problems that are on our global plate. And what I love about community is it helps bring us together. It helps us combat loneliness. It helps us with all these global things. It helps us become better citizens, better people, better, better neighborhoods, better organizations. I love that beautiful part about community. And that's when I want to start talking about in the next year. What are our deeper values? What are the deeper whys? Why do we come together? I mean, it's not always easy. Sometimes we're trying to convince the sea level that the community is exactly what they need. And it's it's a hard wall to sometimes bash your head on. I've done it before. <laughs> um, but I wanna start talking about those deeper qualities of what we do and why we do it. Because we stick around and keep doing it even when it gets hard. And that's what I love about who we are. Um, and yeah, I hope that you're 
some of you are curious about doing that with me. I want to talk to you. I love talking one on one. Um, so I want to encourage anybody who feels like that feels like it to reach out to me. I love setting up a time on the calendar to connect. And I just want to look forward to next year of doing more of that with you. Um, going deeper, asking about our why. Of course, we'll go into all the other wonderful things, data and metrics and operations and growth. Those are all the qualities we're going to bring forward to that we're going to talk about. But I, I want to go a little deeper with all of you. Um, so I'm excited for next year to do that with you. Um, and now I get to bring on another amazing person that's part of our community. I want to introduce Jeff Rowe, who is the Senior Community Manager at DecisionLink. Um, Jeff also serves for um, as a CMX host, the head of um, the Tampa Bay, Florida chapter. I've been able to connect with him a few times. He's a really great human, and I love that he's part of this. And because we can't give a standing ovation in person, I want you to throw those amazing emojis and welcome Jeff to the stage. Hi, Jess. Thanks so much for having me today. Excited to be here. It's great to have you here. Awesome. Cool. Well, I think um, uh, we can go ahead and, and get started with uh, with our panel discussion for today. So we're really going to be focusing on um, celebrating victories, reflecting on lessons learned and talking a little bit about what our expectations and predictions are for next year. Um, so with that, I would like to bring on my panelists today. I am joined by three community powerhouses. Um, welcome everyone to the stage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass things off to our panelists for them to introduce themselves and I'll give it over to Tiffany first and we can go around from there. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Oh. Hi, everyone. I'm Tiffany Oda. I'm based in San Francisco. I am the co-founder and co-leader of Community Observations, which is a community group focused all on community operations, something I'm very passionate about. Um, and i uh, really, really happy to be here today. Awesome. Colleen, I see you're unmuted. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Colleen Curtis. I am the head of community growth and experience at Reddit, which is a new role for me that I started in September. Um, and I've previously worked with um, the likes of Shira at Miro um, and at Yelp, as well as the Mom Project working in community. Um, I'm based in Austin, Texas, so I'm currently enjoying shorts weather for the first time ever in my life in December. Um, I'm a Midwestern born and bred and spent a lot of my life in Chicago. So excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'll pass it to Shira. Yes. Hi, everyone. I am Shira M. Um, I'm currently at Miro, like you just heard from Colleen. I'm the head of community success. Um, I've been in the community world now for a little over 10 years um, and focusing on tech. And so really thought out uh, community building, growth, retention, engagement, acquisition across the board. So I am super, super excited to be here with all of these wonderful, wonderful people. Talk all things community and what worked, what didn't work, and what we have going for next year. Um, thank you for having me. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's so amazing to have, um, you know, wonderful people who have already accomplished so many great things in the community space. And uh, when I when I saw wh who, who was selected for the panel today, I was really excited to see Tiffany. And then once we had the opportunity to meet with Colleen and Shira, knowing that you guys had worked together in the past, it's it's reassuring about, you know, how close knit the community space is and how um, how supportive we are of, of one another, either, you know, once we do have the opportunity to cross paths and then, you know, should our paths go in, in separate directions, we know that we're never too far from each other at any given point in time, which is uh, one of the best things that I love about being a part of this industry. Um, before we, we even hop into uh, any of the questions for today and the topics that, that we're ready to discuss, um, let's just quickly set the stage. The holiday season is, you know, kicked off. We're well into it. Christmas is right around the corner. Um, real quick, how was everyone's Thanksgiving and how have you been enjoying the holiday season so far? 
Tiffany, I'll kick it off to you. Thanks, Jeff. My Thanksgiving was amazing. We, uh, the last couple of years, my family's decided to do a little mini trip for Thanksgiving every year. This year it was Tahoe. So we rented a cabin. We had some light dusting of snow before the huge storms came and got a day of snowboarding in um, and had way too much food and played a lot of board games. It was wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. I was on a plane, so we were coming back home. We did not do a Thanksgiving, but that's okay. We were with things with my family the like during the weekend afterwards. But um we were on a plane ride with I had a crazy toddler running back and forth in the aisle screaming, Run away, run away. So that was fun. <laughs> I'm sure I can draw a segue to running away from my Thanksgiving, um, but I won't. Um, <laughs> glad you made it back. Okay. Um, I stayed in Austin for Thanksgiving and it was great. And we hosted my husband's family. And so we had a bunch of people here. Um, fun fact, my mother-in-law is an author of cookbooks. So um, I don't have to cook at all um, for Thanksgiving or whenever there's big meals. So that was really fun. Um, and then I ended up doing a very last minute boondoggle to Detroit with my oldest to celebrate my mom's 70th birthday so we we did a we did a lot in a short amount of time so it was great that's excellent that's excellent i uh, that resonates with me and on a couple of levels um you know the first one being that my uh my foray into hosting uh as a cmx connect participant um started in austin now you know i was in living in austin for a few years before i, I made my way down to tampa bay and um you know austin will always hold the uh, be very near and dear to my heart for those reasons. Um, but on the other, uh, on the flip side of things, I also didn't have to cook this Thanksgiving. I, uh, I hosted it at my house with my father, um, but we just ordered catering from a local diner and it was very, um, I like very, it. very low lift on, on yeah, my part. Nice. So, um, you know, both on the cooking side and the cleanup side, it was just like, oh, wow. And there's just, there's just forks and knives to wash. Okay, cool. <laughs> so that was um, that was pretty delightful, but I'm glad to hear everyone enjoyed, um, and that's uh, that that puts me in a good mood. I um, I'm one of those people that as soon as like the local radio stations are playing Christmas music, I'm I'm like always listening to that, pretty much throughout the entire holiday season. So First that's the mode. Of, yeah, yeah, I'm big on that. So. That's the mode I've been in, and that's the mode I will continue to operate in probably through Christmas Day. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Well, now that we've set the stage and we're in the, the holiday spirit officially, um, I think we can go ahead and dive in. So today we're here to talk about victories, lessons learned, and expectations and predictions for next year. Um, with that, I think we'll start with the victory side of things because this is a year end celebration, right? So let's start with the fun stuff. Um, so our first question is both, you know, as you went navigated through 2020 through 2022, uh, on an individual level, um, what were some of the victories that you experienced personally in your career? Um, let's celebrate those first. Let's start with the micro stuff and then we can talk about what you think the industry experience as um, as victories. Anyone who wants to jump in first, feel free. I've been wondering for so you guys can go. I first. could start off. Yeah, <laughs> I think for me personally, I give this a lot of thought around, you know, what personal victories did I have over the year, over this hard year, like continuously hard year. And for me, it's I, I joined Miro. In, eight months ago. And I came from um, another organization where I didn't feel 100%, um, you know, connected to its full values. And joining Miro really gave me the opportunity to feel and be connected to their main mission and to their values and to the people there. Cough, cough, Colleen is a big inspiration for me. Um, and I think what was so nice and is a huge, huge, huge victory for me is the fact that joining Miro and a company like Miro, um, I did not have to pitch or persuade or really, you know, 
persuade anyone in the company to understand the value of community. Uh, it already existed. You know, our C level and leadership already knew that community is super impactful. And they allowed, you know, the, the community leadership team and the team itself to build upon that and really give us the resources and, you know, the hands to, to do that. And so that's a huge victory for me because most of the companies I have been at, it's always been, you know, let me show you the value. Let me walk you through this. Let me pitch this to you. And then we really get into the execution. And here it was like, it was so refreshing. I could just join and start getting the work done. Um, and I think we all can relate to that, especially when we're in this, you know, community industry. Um, I think that's starting to, you know, change now and expand, but it was really refreshing at, to just come in and be like, okay, let's, let's start brainstorming. Let's start building out our strategy. Let's start getting to work rather than, okay, let me talk to all these people to get their, their buy-in for why we're here and doing what we're doing. Colleen, maybe I'll pass it to you because you're a big part of that for me in my victory. I think I did a little bit of that before you got there, so I'm very glad that it paid off for you. It did. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, well, a huge victory for me. I, I spent the beginning part of the year at Miro, so I basically have the, the tale of, of two places here and um, got to hire some incredible people. Like Cher said, um, Miro really is very committed to its community and investing in in its community and and showed up with a lot of the resourcing allocation and headcount um and so we brought in some incredible leaders across the team which um for me was such a joy like it was so cool to see you know we we're bringing in really high caliber talent and in, in a couple different dimensions of community and really creating a strategy that that they could lean into that was amazing um i had not planned to leave miro um and you know building that team out was was a huge um, a huge anchor for me at, at Miro. And I really was proud of the team we had built. Um, and then I ended up taking a leap and moving on to Reddit. And um, there were several reasons for that. Um, one of which was community is the product and how often as a community professional, do you get to go work on something where community is literally the thing that everyone cares about? Um, in addition, you know, getting to take on kind of a greenfield space around some of the community challenges that come with a platform that's been in existence for, you know, 18 or 19 years. Um, and so for me, it was a huge victory, but it was also a huge challenge. Um, and um, I also moved to Austin in the process. <laughs> and so it was a lot of change for me. Um, it, I was very far out of my comfort zone for the majority of the year. Um, I look back at it as being a really positive one for me, though, career-wise, and, and have met um, and accelerated kind of my network of community professionals through a lot of people like Shira and Tiffany and and some of these other people that I've gotten to meet um, as as some of those personal things have come to fruition. So uh, it's been a good year. So, Tiffany, tell us. Tell Thanks, us about your Yes. <laughs> yeah, this year was honestly a, a challenge, but so fulfilling for me. Um, I think, you know, starting off the year, my manager slash community superstar Holly Firestone went on maternity leave and um, she sits on the exec team. So it was an amazing opportunity to step up and actually see what it's like from an executive perspective. Um, you know, I think Venify is very unique in that community was its own, you know, uh, business function alongside all the other teams. And so being able to represent the community side um, and, you know, work cross-functionally with all the other leaders um, during a time where we were introducing new audiences, increasing our engagement, coming up with surprise and delight initiatives and really experimenting um, was super fulfilling. And uh, I would say this is not my first go at stepping up when managers go on parental leave. And I think that, you know, a lot of times it's daunting, but it's also such a good opportunity to be able to fulfill a leadership role, even if it's in a temporary capacity. So I think that was really amazing. Um, I think also another win that I had was being able to help other companies with their community operations, with their product feedback. I think, um, there are so many new community platforms coming up every day and they all 
you know, I think it's a big Venn diagram of the overlap of what these platforms are doing. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in our 2023 predictions. But I did sign on as a strategic community advisor for Talkbase. Um, it's a startup that's focused all on the operation side of community, which, as you all know, is my wheelhouse. And I'm super <laughs> nervous about it. And um, so that's been really fulfilling to kind of guide the product and the team to, you know, things that were really important for me in operations roles, but has always kind of been a headache. So those manual processes, thinking about the data, like the things that you, the mindless like data entry things um, and being able to kind of help foster that and further the product in that way. Um, and also kind of touching base with all these other startups and all these other people who are looking to get into the space and being able to provide some insight into, you know, how to get into community operations. And, you know, you might not be in community before, but you're interested in operations, what kind of skills and what kinds of experiences will help you get into those roles. Um, despite the layoffs that have been happening across our space, I do think that there's a lot of interest in community, both from, you know, hiring and establishing community for companies, but also from an individual's perspective and in getting into community as a career. And so being able to kind of be a part of that has been really fulfilling. Um, and then also I got to step out of my comfort zone a lot this year. I was uh, featured and interviewed in a lot of podcasts. I spoke at the Gainsight Pulse Conference, which is a customer success conference, and really got to kind of see the interminglings uh, between customer success and community. Um, it was really cool, kind of just like the murmurs across the conference of like the excitement of community and how customer success folks are actually starting to become more interested in community as we're working cross-functionally together. And then lastly, I'm not biased at all, but i um, getting to host the workshop at uh, the CMX summit this year. It was also a really big highlight for me. That's excellent. Sounds like everyone had some really good um, victories uh, this year on a personal note. And and I think to, you know, to, to speak a little bit on, on the macro level, uh, one of the common threads that I heard in, in all of your your victories uh, this year is the opportunity to lean further into community work, um, the opportunity to help out with community operations and, uh, you know, advise other communities on how they can lean further in so and then tiffany to your point your earlier point about despite the layoffs this year it seems like you know there's been a pretty even balance of you know i know we're about to dive into the lessons learned portion of of, of our discussion um but it seems to me like there's an even balance between um some of the not so great things like layoffs like we like we talked about earlier but um, a lot of, there's still a hunger, there's still a desire for community, there's still opportunities for us to lean in and um, really continue to push the needle as far as the growth of our, of our industry goes. So would you say that that's something you've observed as well on the macro level? Yeah, I'm Definitely. seeing it. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, for me, I'll share a little bit about um, my victories personally. Um, you know, 2022 was was definitely a challenging year for myself, as as for with a lot of other folks. Um, I think one of my biggest takeaways was really um, learning to uh, lean in more into myself and and real, you know have confidence in the experience that I've built up until this point in my career, and in doing so, I've been able to step further outside of my comfort zone. Like Tiffany, I also um, leaned in heavily into uh, doing podcasts or, or hosting events. Um, getting the, the Tampa Bay chapter up and running was another victory of mine. Um, but yeah, really navigating through the roller coaster of 2022, um, I you know was subject to experiencing some of those layoffs like, like other folks had been um but really coming out of that more resilient than before so um so yeah that's definitely a victory of mine cool um now for the uh the lessons learned let's say the let's not say the not so good stuff let's just call <laughs> it lessons learned right um coming out of 2022 what would you guys say are the biggest lessons that you that you uh, have coming out of this year and uh, what are your biggest takeaways going into uh, next year? 
At least for me, um, and this is with any job, any role, any company, it's all about trial and error and having a mindset as well as it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail. In fact, it's great to do that because you can learn from it, you can grow from it, and you can move forward with it. And so I think a few lessons learned that I've experienced um, was, you know, you have this framework and this idea of how to build community and the foundations of it. And you really focus on like, well, why does this community exist? What value is it really bringing to the community and then back into the company in itself? And I will say that joining Miro, it's was exciting because it was a massive challenge because we have so many different types of users, so many different use cases, and one type of community isn't going to fit, you know, all the whole picture. And so mm -hmm. I think a lesson learned from my end and my whole team, if you're watching, you can uh, attest to this, is not trying to put band-aids on current communities and community programs, but really take it back to the foundation, mm -hmm. understand what's the problem, what's the pain point, and instead of trying to fix it quickly and move on, maybe you need to take a step back and pivot and really just build from scratch again. And I think we did that the hard way. You know, we realized that we had a lot of great community programs at Miro and they might have been fantastic previously, but as we expand and as we grow, they might just not align with the motivations and the value that we're giving to the community. And what we try doing a ton is just try reworking it, reshaping it. Um, and then after a while, we just realized this isn't working and we just need to start from scratch and rebuild the framework. And so it took us, I would say like a good three months to decide that this is the place that we we're going to start. It's a good time. It's the end of the year. Next year, we'll start fresh but I will say that it did take the time and that was you know a, a failure on our end even though we're learning from it we're growing from it and we'll rebuild these these types of communities to best best suit both Miro and the community most importantly yeah Mine is similar. Um, also, uh, an adage that I feel like I give as advice that I often have to like replay back to myself, particularly being the new person again, is you can't really fast forward through this getting to know you period. And that includes people. If you're taking on new teams, you're joining new colleagues. It also includes like the bucket of stuff that you're inheriting, right? And it's very similar to Shira's point. And, and some of my learnings are also from Miro around you know, I, I think sometimes as community people, we believe that like through the sheer power of our belief in the way people can belong to something, we believe we can fix things. And so we're like, if we just get people excited or we just mm -hmm. make this more organized, we operationalize it, 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 it could be great. And in reality, you're like, does this even go here? Like, does this even fit with what we're trying to do anymore? Right. And has, has, have we outgrown it? And, and I think it was a big learning for me because I spent a pretty long time trying to kind of retrofit everything literally into a mirror board strategy that started just looking like an octopus. It had so many <laughs> tentacles to it. I was like, this is just not possible. Like we're not going to be able to do all of this exceptionally well. And so I think my learnings and what has come out of that heading into another new role that had some degree also of ambiguity and a lot of things that have had been stood up over time uh, to, to satisfy needs of that growing community was, you know, really taking a hard look at like, does this fit with the the soul that we're trying to feed right now? Mm -hmm. And can we honor the why it was built and, and also continue to help it evolve so that we can really meet our community where they are and, and we can really put our best foot forward. And, and that really can we ensure that what we're doing exceptionally well on the community side shines through versus how we're like holding everything together with duct tape. Um, and I think, you know, community teams, you know, for, for lack of resourcing, end up with a lot of duct tape. And there's a different saying for it in another language that is very colorful. Um, but <laughs> I worked at Miro, so a lot of non-English non as a first language folks. But um, can we kind of like shed some of the duct tape and start to build things for the long haul? 
And I think the more times you go through that, the better it is. And so again, there's no fast forwarding to context. And um, I, I learned a ton this year in, in that regard. What was the language and what was the saying? I'm curious. <laughs> um, it was, uh, uh, Shira knows because she inherited much of these books, but it was uh, a Russian saying that's basically like, um, we're building it with duct tape is sort of like the American and the Russian version is a little bit more like shit and sticks. Um, <laughs> um, and I think they translated that back to me and I'm like, yeah, that fits, that works. <laughs> <All right. laughs> On the back end, things are not looking as good as we hope they would. Uh, so pardon my language and I'll hand it off to you. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, one of my uh, lessons learned right now is I just moved into this room and the sun actually starts hitting around <laughs> the Good time. lesson. So I'm uh, now glowing. Um, but I think one of the community related focuses or kind of like lessons learned is focus. I feel like we as community teams get pulled in so many different directions. We're supporting the entire organization and, you know, pivoting is something that happens all the time in community, especially if, you know, there's company initiatives that come up or suddenly there's a new event or a new, you know, product feature or you're, you know, introducing a new uh, product in the portfolio, you, you kind of have to jump all the time in different directions. And so being able to kind of still focus your core intent of what the community is while being able to balance the requirements and demands that are pulling you in all these different directions is something that I think takes a lot of practice. It takes really good leadership to be able to push something off or figure out you know, what is doable for the team without killing ourselves. I think um, burnout is obviously something that a lot of us community people face. And so being able to kind of really focus, prioritize, time things out. Uh, Y'all know I'm a big fan of the roadmap, and I think that's a big part of it too, um, is was definitely a learning from me, not only at Venify, but in my own personal practice as well. Um, you know, doing all these side projects, participating in the community space, it still does pull you in a lot of different directions. And I found myself burning myself out and it wasn't due to just my job, but it was due to all of the other commitments I made. And so I took a second to pause and figure out, you know, what were my priorities and what was important for me. Um, and so I think that was a really good lesson learned that I will continue to face in 2023 as, um, you know, I start to continue pushing through in the space. Um, Work-wise, I think one of the lessons learned is the balance between internal enablement and education and working cross-functionally across the team. So we actually had something that um, Holly Firestone phrased called the Missy Elliott project, where mm -hmm. we flipped it and reversed it. And we essentially made it so it's like, okay, community people, you're usually the ones that are asking, you know, for, for content or asking for product managers to participate in webinars or asking for support in, you know, from your support team on creating, you know, knowledge based articles or content for the community. Why not flip it and be like, okay, you support team have a goal. And how can you help the community to help you reach that goal of kind of like flipping it of like, you actually need us just as much as we need you. And how can we make that relationship equal? But at the same time, we also still had a lot of internal enablement to do. People still, you know, community is still new at Benefi and it was how to establish the importance of community, the understanding of community while at the same time kind of asking for that. So it was a, a delicate balance and a delicate dance that there were definitely some lessons learned in there. Um, and then I think from the, again, the kind of community priorities and focus, understanding your audience's needs and wants and what they really look to the community for. Mm -hmm. So previously for, um, for the Venify Warrior community, we were looking to, you know, do gamification. We were looking to do recognition, uh, as well as, you know, the educational components, the self-service, et cetera. And we did a survey response because we weren't seeing as much engagement as we wanted to in the community. And we found that people didn't really care about gamification and they didn't care about recognition. They wanted to help spread knowledge. They wanted to learn. They wanted self-service. And so being able to, again, pivot our priorities a little bit more, focusing less on the surprise and delight, less on the recognition, less on the gamification, and more on kind of like that meat core, you know, stuff of the community um, was was definitely learning and helped us understand our community members better, which thus then increased their engagement and willingness to participate in the community. 
So those are kind of for me, my main. That, that resonates with me so much, everything you just said, and especially like this focus piece. And I think a big piece of us even having a community operation and, and strategy manager on our team is to help our whole team really focus and prioritize and build out the best processes so that we can engage with the community and we can build really awesome, amazing experiences for them. Um, and we're in a similar boat as well with like the internal enablement as well. And I think we're getting to a much better place with other teams recognizing the power of community and starting to take advantage of what we can offer and with our operational and strategy manager building out those internal processes as well to either you know get those requests or like vice versa of like making it known that community is a channel and it's a channel that you can use um, to build upon your goals and what in your strategy in general so that totally related to to the things that we're working on internally too Love that. Love that. All of your answers resonated with me very deeply. Um, I think I, I experienced a lot of the same lessons uh, in my work. Um, to your point, Shira, about, you know, us feeling like we have to be in a rush as community professionals to fix all of the things um, since we're, we're so supportive cross-functionally and across different parts of, of the organizations that we work for. I experienced that a lot myself. And it's like, we go into it almost with a certain level of naivety, right? Like mm -hmm. we, have, we have all the tools, we have all the frameworks, we have all these resources. Now let's go ahead and, and do the damn thing. Um, but a lot of times what I found was that uh, some of, the, some of the, the problems that were in need of resolution uh, in terms of what, <clears throat> what problems need to, to be addressed cross-functionally are a lot more systemic than I originally perceived mm. and um, required a very high level of change management uh, uh, with regards to the work that we do. Um, so to that point, you know, like when we're thinking about how to operationalize and, uh, you know, create processes around what's the best way that we can do this? Does this even belong here? Right. Um, a lot of that involves um, getting folks on the same page, right? And and Colleen, to your your point earlier about, you know, we're doing all of this as we're also uh, building relationships with stakeholders across the organization. And that, that relationship building, we talk a lot about relationship building as community professionals, but that kind of work takes time. Mm -hmm. We have to allow that to happen as, intentionally and organically as possible right because you don't you know you don't create a relationship it's not it can't be forced you know you can't say you know I, i'm gonna establish relationships with all of my stakeholders and you know we're gonna have this kumbaya moment and it's all gonna just gel together um it's it, that's not how it works you know you have to have opportunity for the relationship to breathe a little bit and allow for those moments where you're able to step up and show up for somebody else that you work with um, because that's how the trust begins to build as part of that relationship. And then Tiffany, to your point about focus, if, um, you know, if we're talking about problems that are a little bit more systemic than community can really help out with, um, or that, you know, we can help out to an extent, but it also requires an, you know, all hands on deck kind of effort, um, then we really need to be intentional about, you know, what problems are we addressing and have we addressed those problems as thoroughly as we can before we move on to something else, even though everyone's eager to do all the things at once, right? Um, so yeah, thanks for all those answers. Those were, um, those were very helpful and resonated with me uh, pretty deeply as well. Um, and I think, if I'm thinking about this at the macro level, um, you know, of course, industry stuff that we saw going on this year with layoffs and all of that um, not so fun stuff. Um, it reminds me about, um, I'm not sure how many uh, folks either on the panel or joining us today 
might have seen that um, that new documentary on Netflix that Jonah Hill directed where he interviewed mm -hmm. his therapist. Mm -hmm. um, but if anyone hasn't seen it, it's called Stutz and it's really good. <laughs> um, but there's this one um, there's this one part of the uh, documentary because in addition to like telling the story of his therapist's life, he also synthesizes the methodology that his therapist takes in his approach to how he treats his patients into these very simple and actionable methods that you can take and uh, employ in your own life and immediately you know, feel better about your mental state. Um, and one of those things is uh, this thing called uh, part X. And part X is like this part of our identity that is you know the negative Nelly, the one that's telling you about all the things that you think you can do but really can't do and all of the blockers that, um, that we self-impose in um, bringing ourselves to, you know, a clearer state of mind, having more confidence, and and uh, uh, taking uh, taking more faith in you know ourselves as individuals. Um, and there were there was a bucket of three things that are like things that you have to realize are constants in life that you cannot change. And once you accept these things, you're more empowered to to uh, battle that part of yourself, that part X. Um, and one of the things is pain. The mm. second thing is uncertainty. And the third thing is constant work. So I think those last two, like uncertainty and constant work is like with everything that we've seen uh, negative that has taken place over the course of the year, if we, uh, if we take solace in the fact that trusting in that uncertainty being comfortable with with facing the uncertain and um knowing that you got to keep working through it uh we kind of are a little bit more empowered to trust going into that void um and yeah that's just that's just my thought for the ma macro piece of it if anybody has anything else before we move on feel free to jump in yeah totally i think the uncertainty and like it, it helps us continue to grow as people, as a company, you know, you need to try new things. You need to, to be in this uncomfortable position to learn that you can do it and you can be confident and, you know, you know, do it. Like, you know, it doesn't matter if you're gonna trip and fall down or you just get right back up and you continue going. So the uncertainty piece is a huge way of like, I think about things. You just go straight into it. Don't look back. I totally agree. In fact, one of my, I call them personal professional uh, values is being 10% uncomfortable at all times. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to number one, avoid complacency. Number two, accept any change or uncertainty. And then just kind of like helps motivate you to continue learning and and being okay with embracing a little bit of chaos. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I, um, I think those things are super important. And one of the points that they make in the film too is that like uh, without that, that uncertainty and um, a little bit of that pain, um, there's no, without the antagonist, then the protagonist has no story. There's no character arc. And so there's no growth. Mm -hmm. So it's like you need that part of yourself in order to, uh, in order to grow as an individual. Totally. So we, we all need that um, to grow as an industry. So um, cool. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, heading into the last part of our, of our discussion for today, let's talk about the future. Uh, we've talked about the past and the present. Let's talk about 2023. What do we see as, um, well, well, personally, what what's on the forefront for you? What are some of your goals for next year? Let's talk mm -hmm. about individual goals. Um, and then let's talk about predictions for, uh, for this lovely industry that we call the community industry. Personally, I just um, wanna uh, sleep more at night. <laughs> I have a two and a half year old and um, yeah, you know, he still likes to wake up mommy uh, throughout the night. So I would like more sleep. So if anyone has tips around making sure your your kid stays in his bed, his or her bed. Um, but I think like 
community industry wise, um, I know I've talked a lot about this with other community people and we've all chatted about it too. And it's making sure that you're flexible moving forward in next year, especially with this like global economic change and everyone being a little un- uncertain, which is kind of our theme. Um, it's just being open to being flexible, adjusting and adapting, pivoting, you know, all those hot, hot words, those trending words, um, because we really don't know what next year looks like. And so I think community in general, we just have to really make sure that we're open to different ideas, different opinions, and coming together to like solve, solve those problems or those roadmaps. Um, I also think that it's really important and a, a big, big trend with the pivoting is to making like we're talking about making sure that you're aligning with other teams so that we're constantly adding that value to the, you know, the company that we're in or the strategy that's taking place or, you know, the main KPIs. And so really aligning yourself with the needs of other teams. Um, and I also just think in general, we're, we're going back to in-person things. So we need a reshift um, going to IRL. I know, I think Tip, that was Tiffany's, you know, predictions as well. We chatted about, and you'll probably talk about it. Um, but I definitely think we need to start thinking about what in-person looks like and how we're going to re-add that into our strategy with the global, virtual, scalable mindset still. Uh, maybe Tiffany, I'll hand it off to you since I know we might have some overlap. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, Shira. Um, personally, I think my goal is to find a little bit more intentionality again, kind of going back to that focus and I will continue to do so is it's a learning journey for me of, you know, figuring out maybe not saying yes to everything or maybe being able to push back a little bit or just kind of work on timing myself out um, and making sure that I'm not spread too thinly Um, from a community perspective. It is interesting. I do think that there's going to be kind of a shift in how organizations think about community going forward. I think there's going to be a mini bounce back from all the economic things that are happening right now. Um, But, you know, as generally a non-revenue generating function, we know all the complexities and showing the ROI of community. Um, But unfortunately, a lot of the times as we're seeing community functions are the first to go. But I think with all these layoffs happening, there are going to be a lot of opportunities in 2023. I think communities will be focusing more on finding that efficiency and really showing the value. And I think to that end, share your point of kind of like working cross-functionally and showing that value across the company. I think that's going to be a main priority for a lot of the community teams in 2023. I do think we're also, as an industry, potentially going to see a little bit of step back in the designated role of community manager. I think even in the space right now for the jobs that I've been seeing posted out there, it's again, kind of looping us into social media or marketing or events. Um, And so I think we're gonna need to, as a collective community of community, going to need to redistinguish ourselves as a designated role because companies are looking to streamline. They're looking to make things more efficient and I think part of that is also like, oh, well, community can also do all of these things or it falls into all of these categories. And so we're going to need to kind of like push back a little bit on that together. Um, I do also think that there's going to be platform mania, as I called it. Um, It's going to, you know, there's so many new community tools. Everybody, like I get reached out to so many times, like every week of people saying like, oh, I'm working on maybe building this community thing. I was wondering if we can get some product feedback. And I love that there is an interest But at the same time, a lot of the people who I find are reaching out don't have any community experience. They just know that community is the hot topic and they're jumping on the bandwagon and trying to build something. And so I think um, being able to distinguish and kind of, again, like think about where the needs are in our space. And hopefully, I mean, I would love to just see kind of like an all in one platform get built, but being able to distinguish kind of like those smaller platforms and putting together the puzzle pieces for your architecture rather than maybe focusing on like the big fish out there. Um, So I think it's going to be interesting to kind of see the more, more platforms being popped up and what their intents are and what their goals are and kind of what part of the community umbrella of functions um, they solve. 
And then lastly, from, cause I don't want to just talk cause I can talk for so long about this, but I think one of the things is also, you know, I think community as a space um, skyrocketed in, you know, awareness and popularity, et cetera, you know, it's been a range, but, you know, a couple of years ago. And I do think that as we see more people who, you know, are starting to get a little bit more of a community experience under their belt, I think there's going to be content madness. Um, we community folk, we love content. We love to help one another. We love to share our experiences, learnings, and it shows in the space from how many resources and things there are out there. Um, there are so many of us with newsletters and blogs and podcasts, you name it. Um, but with more people who have more community experience, I think that content is going to become a layer deeper. I think rather than going over the high, like this is how you become a community manager and this is how you, you know, engage your community. I think we're going to get into some really like deep, uh, high level, deep but high level, like from an executive standpoint, um, content, which I think is going to be really exciting. Just getting into the nitty gritty, getting into those details. I think a lot of it is going to be operationally focused as well. So I think that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, and then I also think that there are going to be more communities out there or more focus for uh, communities with people with like three plus or five plus years of experience. Um, so rather than also like focusing on the new newbies who are coming in, I think there's going to be a focus on like, all right, we've got experience. What's next for us? Um, so yeah. By the way, for anyone who's um, who's tuned in, Tiff dropped some really great content about proving the value of community, especially as we think about um, how community oftentimes ends up being uh, first on the chopping block um, if, if we're thinking about, if organizations are thinking about making cuts. So if you haven't already seen it, if you aren't connected with Tiff, follow her wherever she's at. Um, you know, I'll give everyone an opportunity to plug their um, where where they are in the in the social worlds um, and all the networks and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, some really great content about proving the value of community uh, within your organization. So definitely check that out. Um, and Colleen, finish us off. Take us home. Sure. Okay. My personal goals, um, which is a good time of the year to do this. Um, I really expect to be able to do some of the best work of my career in 2023. Um, I have been no stranger to telling people that I do not expect to be in tech for the rest of my life. And so I'm, I'm looking to go out on a very high note here over the next couple of years. Um, and it's been a, a wild, strange ride. And um, there's no better place to do it than Reddit. And it's an incredible community. And it really is the best soul of the internet. So I'm very excited about doing the work. Um, it's an incredible team. Um, and just leaning into it. I mean, kind of achieving that flow state. I do think we have been operating in a bit of a like sink or swim dynamic for several years, just in the world, let alone in the community profession. And so being able to really carve out the time and capacity to do the work that really is the highly focused, exceptional work that community can be known for. Um, I'm really excited about that. I'm also excited to carve out time to um, help people get jobs. I love help helping community people get jobs. Um, it's just like a, a, a hobby. So I, I do, a, I plan to formalize some of that in 2023, just because I think, um, I love spending time with community people. These are my people. And so I'll, I'll figure out how to do that in 2023. No stated goal on that yet though. Um, for the community industry and like kind of predictions and insights, I echo a lot of, of the same, thoughts from Tiffany and Shira around there's platform mania. There's like a lot happening, right? Like 2023 is going to be a tough year, I think, for everyone. And so one of the things that um, having gone through a recession early in my community career, which dates me, but was 2008, um, is being really indispensable and exceptionally good at what you are great at in community is, is really the savior, right? Like it won't save you a hundred percent of the time, but being great at a lot of things makes you easy to cut. And so that becomes where you see these community orgs that do everything, right? As opposed to like, here's what we do exceptionally well. We're the only people skilled within this department to be able to do this. And so my prediction is that like differentiation and dimension of community organizations and roles are going to be very important this year. And that's something that a lot of us have control over with our own like 
hey, this is what I am exceptionally great at. Tiffany's done an amazing job of this with community operations. Like that didn't even really exist 10 years ago, right? It was just like, everyone's a community manager, um, but community is not a monolith, right? Like we are all not built the same. There's tons of variation now with experience level and subject matter expertise and, um, and how we work. And so I do think honing in on your own personal narrative of you know what you do exceptionally well and then what your team does exceptionally well and then repeating it over and over and over again like i know people think like oh i said that once it's like no one remembers you have to repeat 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 what you're great at and what you care about and if you do that internally and externally it will start to help i think with some of that um i think we're gonna see hopefully a consolidation of platform mania um all of them sprouted in a time where things were really gangbusters I think we're going to start to see some consolidation, I think, for the better of community professionals. Um, and yeah, and my hope and prediction and insight is that the people that work in community are the people who are the antidote to loneliness. And that is a really important job. So yes, we're here for the metrics and the revenue and all of the things that help us do this as a profession. But like, people that work in community are uniquely gifted to bring people together and we've never been more important that we will be next year. So my hope is that everyone leans into that, finds the joy in that, and also do not let yourselves burn out because that is, that is a real thing that happens to community people. So, um, so those are my big jumbled things, but I hope to, to see more of all of you in 2023. That gave me the warm and fuzzies, Colleen. Yes. <laughs> Yes, same here. That was super solid and actually very concise. So um, uh, definitely uh, left this on a high note. I think for me, um, on a personal level, as far as goals go for next year is to really just build upon what I was able to accomplish this year. Um, you know, I, I would love to continue joining folks on podcasts and, you know, making appearances at events, uh, working on some of that personal branding is always a, a uh, a fun part of, of this work. Um, but as far as what I consider uh, to be predictions, if I think about predictions for next year, I kind of think about some of the trends that I noticed this year and just really excited to see more of that next year. Um, so on the, you know, the community companies that are for us as, as community professionals, we're also not, um, uh, in, in they were not ex, they were not an exception from you know some of these layoffs that we saw or reorganizations uh, that we saw taking place in 2022. CMX went through its own um, restructuring. Uh, we saw some some big name um, resignations over at Comsor. But the one thing that I noticed um, that came as a result of that. Um, or maybe not as a result of that, not not causality there, but what happened afterwards that I noticed is, of course, there's plenty of community networks for community professionals, but what I was very encouraged to see is the number of um, community spaces for us professionals to get together that are really led by women. I mean, it's I, I personally feel like it's no secret that you guys are kicking our ass in the business world and have been for years. I mean, look at the fact I'm the only guy on this uh, on this panel today. Right. So that's the, the proof is right there. Um, but when we think about like what Rosie Sherry is doing with Rosie Land, what um, what Nikki's doing with the community community, shout out to her. Um, what Samantha Venya Logan's doing with her uh, community uh, discord. Uh, I just want to see more of that because I feel like there's uh, a void that's being filled and um, I want I want to see uh, women shine next year even more than you already have up until this point. So that's uh, that's my prediction slash hope for next year. And um, with that, I think we have like two minutes left. So I'll go ahead and um, invite Jess and Sujin back onto the stage to join us for any uh, closing remarks. Well, I just want to say thank you so much to our panelists, Colleen, Shira, and Tiffany, and to Jeff for moderating this discussion and this really insightful conversation. This was so good. Um, let's go ahead and give them a nice round of applause and throw those emojis in the chat just to give them our support and to our, to our whole panel. Just thanks so much for joining us. All right. 
So now we are going to move on to our community industry awards. And the time has come, my friend, and we're excited to announce the finalists. So just to give you a short overview, the Community Industry Awards began in 2019 as the CMX team looked at all of the incredible achievements in this industry. And as our mission to help com community professionals thrive, we wanted to celebrate publicly. And so the Community Industry Awards were born. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who participated. We got thousands of votes come in, and I genuinely want to say that it's an encouragement to see so much support to our nominees, both individuals and teams in the community space. So we'll be announcing the finalists today, but please be sure to join us for the live Community Industry Award ceremony on January 23rd. So with that said, Jess and I will start by announcing the finalists for the team categories. The first being the Customer Success Community of the Year. We're happy to announce that the top three finalists for this category are Zoom, Spotify, and Culture First. Congratulations on making it to the final round. <laughs> Jess, I'll pass it over to you. Um, next, we have the Growth Marketing Community of the Year Award. And the finalists are HubSpot, the Learning Ally Educator Community, and Culture First um, from Culture Minute. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Our next award in the team category is the User Group Program Community of the Year. The top three finalists are Tussie Turra Network, Woman in CX, and Notion. Congratulations. Next, we have the best new community category. Um, the, the top three finalists in this category are Road Trip, Adobe Journey Optimizer, and COVID Aid Charity. You've done amazing work and congratulations. Now, the next two categories are new ones that we've added as of this year. Our next and new category is the Web3 Community of the Year. And the top three finalists are CeeLo, A1 Blockchain Hub, and Ahoy Connect. Congratulations to you all. Our last team category is also a new one, which is the Creator Community of the Year category. The top three team finalists are Figma, Canva Creators, and Patreon. A huge congratulations to all of our team finalists who've made it to this round. And let's give a, round, a huge round of applause and throw some emojis in and show your support for their amazing work in the community space. All right, thanks Jess. Now we are going to move to our five individual categories to highlight outstanding professionals who've been making a huge impact and we're excited to announce these finalists as well. So our first category is the executive leader of a community team. And this category received the second highest number of nominations and votes. I'm excited to announce that the finalists for this category are Alexis Brown, Elizabeth Zwerg, and Mary O'Carroll. Congratulations to all of you for showing great leadership in the community space. Next, we have our Developer Relations Community Professionals of the Year category. Our top three finalists are Aditya um, Oberai, Samantha Hepburn, and Kaudik Siani. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, congratulations, everyone. Great, so now we have our Gaming Com Community Professional of the Year category. Our top three finalists are Chloe Reed, Ben Green, and Sam G. Congratulations to you three. We have a few more categories, and here are our next um, nominees of the Education and Nonprofit Community Professional. Our top three finalists are Annie uh, Selfo, Jen 
Durkee and Chris Stallone. Thank, thank you for being nominated and congratulations. All right. I'm very honored to announce the finalists of the B2B Community Professional of the Year category, as this received the most nominations and votes this year. The top three finalists of this category are Alex Sue, Monique Vandenberg, and Kate Kailini. Congratulations to both our team and individual finalists. And lastly, we do have two finalists for our CMX Connect chapters. This program fulfills the need for community professionals to come together, to learn, to grow, and ultimately to connect. And we are so excited to see these chapters bloom all across the globe. We had our Connect chapter hosts vote for one another, and we are happy to announce the top two finalists are Istanbul, led by Ilker, Arkansas and Denver, led by Lori Goldman. Congratulations. Thank you for coming to our year-end celebration. Wasn't it amazing? I, I just, I could sit and listen to those three women all day, and Jeff was such a delightful host, as well as our hostess with the most is Sujin. It was lovely to be here with you. Um, two things before we close our time here. Um, be sure to RSVP for our Community Industry Awards coming up um, at the end of January. And Adrian Spare is our host. He will be coming on. We love him and we're so excited he's going to be with us. Um, so please, the link will be shared in the chat. Please uh, RSVP. And secondly, coming to your inboxes soon is the Community Industry Survey. This is an important survey that we all participate in, and it, it has enough longevity now that we really have a wonderful data set to bring to our greater community, um, our greater organizations to really prove the value of community. And so when that comes up, um, please go and fill it out. We need your information and we need your participation. So look for that. And now to you, Suji. Awesome. Well, Jess, this has been so fun. I just want to say that lastly to our, our audience today, this is your opportunity to connect with other community professionals. And we now have our networking tables open based on different categories. So we have two prompts for you to get the conversation started. And firstly, <clears throat> what's a holiday tradition that you celebrate every year? And secondly, what's a win that you experienced this past year in 2022? So our time will end at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, so about 20 minutes. And once again, thanks to everyone for joining. Happy holidays and see you next year.